Phase 4 of the MCU is already shaping up to be pretty exciting. But even more exciting is what it seems to be promising for Phase 5. Each phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe has managed to add new characters and new dimensions to the shared world, opening up new stories and possibilities that would have seemed impossible before. With Thanos defeated, the world of the MCU is set to expand even more with new heroes and new threats. Let's look at some of the Phase 5 characters being set up in Phase 4. Of course, the most anticipated additions to the MCU are the characters that were previously locked away from the MCU thanks to the nature of film rights. When Marvel the publisher was struggling financially, they held a garage sale for film rights, selling off some of their most recognizable characters. But Disney would not be denied for long. And having bought Marvel, they also bought Fox, that held the rights to the X-Men and the Mutants, as well as Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four is another team tied to Kang the Conqueror, making Kang's appearance in Ant-Man make some believe that their introduction is right around the corner. On the mutant end of the universe, Wanda seems like she's on a crash course with the House of M storyline that could introduce mutants as well as Namor himself being a mutant as well as an Atlantean. There are some other hints that Phase 4, whose plans are already set in place by the time the Fox merger has happened, is laying the groundwork for the Fantastic Four and the mutants. The Madripoor flag, Wolverine's favorite watering hole built on the head of a dragon, because comics, has appeared in the set photos from Falcon and the Winter Soldier. However they end up in the MCU, they're easily the most anticipated of the coming MCU. The next big team to join the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the Eternals, with an all-star lineup of Angelina Jolie, Kumail Nanjani, and Selma Hayek portraying the team of near immortals. Tucked down the cast list, however, is another hero that, like the Eternals, could be the key to the future of the MCU. Played by Kit Harington, the actor behind Game of Thrones knowing nothing Jon Snow, the Black Knight is a key character in the story of the Eternals, but he's also a key player in the Avengers, even taking the reins of leadership. That's an important role with the power vacuum at the top with the passing of Tony Stark, retirement of Steve Rogers, and Thor taken off to find himself. In the comics, Dane Whitman's time as the Black Knight has been pretty rocky, including having some consciousness move back and forth throughout time and ancestors, something we're likely to see some of when the Eternals makes its way to the big screen. It's likely that whatever threat the Eternals uncover could be what motivates the Black Knight to step up to reform the Avengers and defend the Earth just like the original team did. Blade might be considered one of Marvel's first real success stories. Prior to Wesley Snipes' cult favorite turn as the Daywalker, Marvel had a series of less than inspiring adaptations. Numerous attempts at Captain America fell flat, Dolph Lundgren's Punisher failed to hit the mark, and then there's Howard the Duck. Blade was the combo breaker. Filmed as a low-budget action horror series, Blade solidified the Vampire Hunter as a fan favorite. Ever since the MCU, fans have been waiting to see Blade join the ever-expanding universe. Last year at Comic-Con, Marvel made their wish official by announcing the casting of Mahershala Ali as the half-vampire blood anti-hero. It's been a long road for Blade. A Blade series was first suggested back in the heady early days of the partnership between Netflix and Marvel that saw success in Daredevil and Jessica Jones. Blade, along with two other members of this list, were set to be the second phase of Netflix shows before Netflix and Marvel went their separate ways. Of the three shows, Blade is the first to be confirmed and cast ahead of its debut on Disney+. Another long-rumored character has gotten the all-important casting announcement that let us know it's coming soon is Bruce Banner's lawyer cousin Jennifer Walters. After getting an emergency blood transfusion from the last guy you want a blood transfusion from, Walters was transformed into the savage She-Hulk. In the comics, Walters is way ahead of her conflicted cousin in coming to terms with her Hulk half, balancing She-Hulk life and life as one of Marvel's most important lawyers. If the Sokovia Accords taught superheroes anything, it's that they need a superhero lawyer on their side. She-Hulk has a lot in common with characters like Deadpool, including a tendency to break the fourth wall and being vaguely aware she's a character in a comic book. Orphan Black's Tatiana Maslany will take the role as the She-Hulk for a Disney Plus series that will follow the Phase 4 shows WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Loki. Bruce Banner himself has already welcomed her into the family, with actor Mark Ruffalo responding to the announcement with a tweet welcoming his cousin to the family. Thaddeus Ross is not gonna like this. Bring on the Red Hulk! Kevin Feige has not been shy about who is on his wish list of favorite heroes to bring to the MCU. And that's one of Marvel's original characters, Namor. Namor is much more than just the king of Marvel's Atlantis. He's been the ultimate frenemy to all of Marvel's dryland heroes and villains alike. 
Namor has little love for the surface dwellers of the Earth, but inasmuch as the oceans are part of the Earth, Namor can be counted on to step up and defend it. But seeing as those on the surface haven't been the best stewards of the oceans, Namor has not been shy to take arms against them for it. As Feige's favorite, there has been numerous Easter eggs that the King of the Deep is lurking about in the MCU. A map of hotspots that hinted at the secretive African nation of Wakanda also hinted at a hotspot at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. During Endgame, Okoye told Natasha not to worry about a tremor at the bottom of the Atlantic, which might have come back to bite her as Namor is rumored to be a part of Black Panther 2. True to form, it's not clear if he'll be friend or foe, likely a little of both. After Thanos fans have been trying to figure out who could possibly top the Mad Titan as the monster at the end of the book for the next saga, one of the characters on a lot of people's shortlist has been the time-skipping conqueror Kang. While Alexander may have wept because there were no more worlds to conquer, Alexander? Huh, he didn't have a time machine. Kang's time-traveling shenanigans have made him a thorn in the side of the Avengers, and in an act of miscalculation himself. Lovecraft country star Jonathan Majors has just been cast as the foe for the next Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, with indications that the baddie he'll be playing is the time-skipping conqueror. Kang is more than just a powerful foe. Thanks to his mucking about in time, he's also completely intertwined in the Marvel Universe. After traveling in time to impress his teenage self, he instead made an enemy of his teenage self, setting in motion the Young Avengers, as well as being the distant offspring of another anticipated MCU character, Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. See, it's all coming together, folks! With a series of recent announcements, it seems like Disney Plus will at least try to get us the much-anticipated WandaVision by December. And to make sure our hype is at 100, they've released a new trailer for the show that's full of delightful clues that raise more questions than they answer. One of those gems in the trailer is the appearance of Monica Rambeau. The last time we saw Monica was as Lieutenant Trouble in the Captain Marvel movie, which is no mistake. In the comics, before Carol Danvers took over the mantle of Captain Marvel, Rambeau held the moniker as one of the first Captain Marvels, and one that had nothing to do with the Kree. She's had other nom de superheroes, including her mother's Captain Marvel call sign Photon. Previous leaks and rumors have Rambo following Nick Fury's advice on flying through space by joining the Sentient World Observations and Response Department, or SWORD. Her appearance in WandaVision hints that she'll be an ever-increasingly important role of the coming phases of the MCU. Joining Blade in the Always a Bridesmaid, Never a Bride for Marvel series is the Fist of Khonshu, the Moon Knight. Like Blade, the vigilante powered by the moon was meant to be a part of the second wave of Netflix shows. That was then, and now the Moon Knight is making another run at the streaming world, with the Umbrella Academy's Jeremy Slater calling the shots. Moon Knight is another character who's intertwined in a lot of the Marvel Universe. He's been an Avenger, both main team and West Coast, a secret Avenger, among other things. Like a lot of Marvel characters, what makes Moon Knight most interesting is not his powers, but his struggles, including a trauma-induced dissociative personality disorder related to his undercover aliases. The former boxer turned CIA agent turned mercenary uses a number of undercover personalities in his detective work, to the point that Mark Spector has started to lose track of which one is the real one. Having an Egyptian moon god riding shotgun in his head hasn't helped. No casting has been announced for the series yet, but that should be coming real soon. The final member of the lost trio of Netflix proposed shows had an even tougher road of will they, won't they? The stunt biker cursed with the spirit of vengeance, Ghost Rider should have joined Blade and Moon Knight as part of a spookier, more supernatural set of shows as a follow-up to The Defenders. Since then, another Ghost Rider made his way to the MCU by the way of another Marvel Entertainment show, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This time, though, instead of being the old, original Johnny Blaze, or even his long-lost half-brother Danny Ketch, it was Robbie Reyes. Reyes is unique in the pantheon of Ghost Riders, in that his spirit isn't Zarathos, but the spirit of one Reyes serial killer uncle. There's a reason being the Ghost Rider is a curse, huh? Gabriel Luna's portrayal of the muscle car loving Ghost Rider in the fourth season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was enough for Marvel to start work on a Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider series for Hulu. That series has been cancelled, leading, along with other developments, to suggestions that Ghost Rider will be getting his own Disney Plus series, joining the original trio that included Blade and Moon Knight. While Wong was able to summon a pretty massive army of people who all got to be Avengers for the day to take down Thanos, the Gore team has taken some serious hits, with at least half of the team dead or retired, and two of the other three looking for new career paths, the roster could use some refreshing. Filling the old team might not end up being the priority, but instead it's looking like youth are the future in the MCU. The groundwork is being laid for some key members of the Young Avengers. Cassie Lang, Scott Lang's daughter and future hero Stature, 
has already been established in the Ant-Man movies. Original Avenger Hawkeye has his own Disney Plus series, where it's believed he'll be training Kate Bishop as the new Hawkeye. Casting rumors for Falcon and the Winter Soldier suggest that Carl Lumby might be playing the role of Elijah Bradley, the Patriot. Speed and Wyken appear as babies in the WandaVision trailer, as the proud parents of Wanda and Vision hold the twins. Even more importantly, there's Kang. Remember how we said Kang tried to impress his teenage self? Well, it went terribly, as teenage Kang hated who he had become and formed the Young Avengers to stop his future self. It's possible that the Avengers movie that marks the transition to Phase 5 will be Young Avengers.